In Exodus chapter 10, we're once again presented with God showing himself mighty and strong in front of Pharaoh's false deities. You see, in Exodus chapter 10, we see the plague of locusts and the plague of darkness. You see, the Egyptians worshipped various gods. One of the gods was Set, S-E-T. He was thought to be the protector of the crops. Another false god that they worshipped was the god of Ra, thought to be the sun god. And as God is using Moses to be his mouthpiece to Pharaoh to let his people go, Pharaoh continues to refuse. And so, as we've seen in Exodus, God sends a plague. Again, with these plagues, there's intentionality, there's strategy to them. They're there to provide judgment, but also insight into who God is. That he's God, greater and stronger than anything or anyone that else could be worshipped. But I find something interesting in this chapter. It seems like Pharaoh softens, that his heart begins to open to obeying God and releasing the people. I mean, let me read to you from Exodus chapter 10, starting in verse 16. It says, Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron. This is after the plague of the locusts. He says, I've sinned against the Lord your God and against you. He confessed, forgive my sin just this once and plead with the Lord your God to take away this death from me. So the word tells us Moses left Pharaoh's court and pleaded with the Lord. And the Lord responded by shifting the wind and the strong west wind blew the locusts into the Red Sea. Not a single locust remained in all the land of Egypt. But it says the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart again so he refused to let the people go. Perhaps you remember that God told Moses that he would harden Pharaoh's heart. This wasn't against Pharaoh's will, but simply it was just making firm that which Pharaoh had already affirmed in his heart. See, for him, this wasn't an episode of true repentance and confession. Pharaoh was just frustrated with the consequences of his sin. So he was responding in emotion and in reaction, doing everything he could just to be let go of the consequences he was experiencing because of his sin, because of his disobedience to God. And if I can have your attention, I want you to tune into this. That is the difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. See, worldly sorrow, repentance, has a lot of words, maybe a lot of emotion, maybe a lot of reaction, but there's no lasting fruit of genuine change. Godly sorrow leads to change. See, once the consequences were lifted, you see Pharaoh right back where he was. His heart is hard. He's not going to let the people go. But see, a godly sorrow, that leads to change. To saying, God, what you say is what I say. What you want is what I want. Where you go is where I go. And friends, this morning, I just want to share with you, that's where life is found. Not in a worldly sorrow where you're just remorseful because of the consequences of your actions, but truly repentant because of what you see your disobedience does to God and to others. Learn the lesson of Pharaoh. He was remorseful. He had a worldly sorrow, which ultimately led to death. But a godly sorrow, one that leads to repentance, ultimately leads to life. You see, these two plagues in Exodus chapter 10, they show the mightiness of God. He's so much bigger and better than set or raw. But it also shows us that it's only in repentance to God that we find life. Don't you hear the gospel in that? That it's only when we turn and see Jesus for who he is, our great Savior and our great King, and we call and confess him as Savior and Lord, repent of our sin and turn to him, that we find life. We don't just act remorsefully about sin, but we repent from sin and trust in Jesus. And that's where life is found. And so in Exodus 10 this morning, I wanna share with you, I wanna encourage you. Today, have a repentant heart, not a remorseful heart, for it's a repentant heart that brings life forevermore.